Hey guys, what's up, Grimmie Team Sam? Back with another video, and today we have episode one, the official episode one of Titans franchise. Last video was just a little bit of a, you know, showcase, telling you what's going on, why I picked the team, all that fun stuff. But now we get to get into the meat and the thick of things. So we are going to be taking on the Tennessee Titans. We're going to be trying to build them up as a franchise. We have Ryan Tannehill. We have Malik Willis. We have Will Levis. Now, this is the depth chart already set, so that is why Stonehouse is at quarterback two, because I want him in as that long, as the catcher for the kick unit, the field goal kicking unit. Um, I just like doing it because that's how they do it in real life. Granted, I go into formation subs and also sub him in there so that there is no difficulty there. Now, as you guys have seen, I have made a couple moves. Hopefully, the trades will be popping up right about now. These will be the trades that I would have made during the preseason. So, we ended up getting Joseph Asai for Rashad Weaver, Jaden Peavy, and M. Brown, one of our really bad safeties in the seventh. Going to the Bengals for Joseph Asai. Uh, Joseph Asai is a better backup. He's just a high overall. I really like him. He always performs well in my franchises. He has two years left. Weaver has two years left. Joseph Asai is the same age. I just figured this would be a step up. Joseph Asai was on the trade block. That's why I'm doing this trade. The next trade, we're trading Christian Fulton, Chris Hubbard, and John LeCue for a four, a five, and a six of this year. Two sixes next year and a seventh in the year after that. Uh, Christian Fulton's coming off contract. The rest of the guys are coming off contract. We got some other guys at corner that I particularly like more that are in a better position to develop. So we're going to end up doing that in the long run. Our next pick, we're trading with the Texans. I know it's an interdivisional trade, but this helps out both teams. We are ending, ended up trading Ben Neiman, Corey Levin, and Jalil Johnson in a six. For Thomas Booker, Reverend Jordan in a seven. We're swapping picks of this year. They get a middle linebacker and depth at center and right end, and we get a D tackle and their like third string tight end at this point. Uh, Reverend Jordan, just a good receiving threat that I would like to keep on the bench. Final trade, we're trading Sean Murphy Bunting and two seventh round picks to the Buccaneers for Robert Hainsey and a fourth. Robert Hainsey is a back at this point with Ryan Jensen being back in the lineup. Sean Murphy Bunting, we are sending back to Tampa Bay, so it's kind of a weird storyline, but he also was coming off contract at the end of this year, and I just don't think he fits into what we need right now, slash I don't think I'll bring him back at the end of the year. It just makes sense to go upgrade center right now. He has two years left. Aaron Brewer only had one. This is a smart move for us. So looking at the team and how it stands, I think we're in a pretty good spot going into this. Now, it's not an incredible spot, right? The offense line still has some problems, and if any injuries happen, we're kind of fucked. But we're still looking fine. The running back room looks great. The wide receiver room looks fine as well. The defense is going to have to be what really steps up in this year. Uh... The defensive line has to play really well. That front five, the guys that are going to be rushing the pass or stopping the run, those guys have to play well. If they don't, we're kind of screwed. The corners are kind of hit and miss right now. They are young and they are unproven, but if one of them can step up and become that lockdown corner, it could be very nice. Uh, Roger McCreary, I'm looking forward to. Hopefully he can play well. Weird that he doesn't have a star. Caleb Farley, I'm looking to hopefully improve a lot as well. We picked up Calvin Joseph from the... Uh, waiver wire, in my opinion, he was a pre he was a 53 man cut, so we ended up picking up him. Alton Robinson, we ended up picking up. Uh, Buddy Johnson and Chance Campbell. Josh Thompson, our preseason MVP, is here. AJ Moore, a safety that actually just got cut in real life by the Titans. We're gonna end up keeping him at least for a little bit until I find a replacement in one of the next recordings that I do for this series. Uh, Trey Wolf and Ryan Stonehouse are our two kickers. Well. You know, because they're both technically kicking the ball, even though one of them's a punter. So, there's that. Uh, specialist go is shown. I'm not going to go over it too much. Let's get into the next thing. So, the practice squad, I'm going to try to keep as realistic as possible. Well, not realistic. I'm going to try to keep as many players that were currently on the Titans on the practice squad. That's why you're going to see a lot of guys like Julius Chestnut, Racy McMath, uh, Rupich, the tackle, Jack Gibbons, uh, Sam Okuanu, and... Eric Garr, uh, I think it's Sidney Jones, and then M. Jackson. I'm just going to keep a lot of these guys around. Hopefully, they all, you know, prove why they need to be here. And uh, and some of these guys I actually very much enjoyed using during the preseason. Some of these guys actually played really a lot good, like Julius Chestnut and Racy McMath. Those are two guys that 
If I if I need somebody, I'm gonna bring them back up over bringing in a veteran. I'm gonna be honest. They played really nicely for me, and I'm willing to bring them back if an injury or if a trade or something happens. I'm going to be showing off some of the upgrades that we got after the end of the preseason. These are after, of course, training camps, uh, all the practices, all the games. Uh, I'm I'm going to have the clip sped up a little bit so it's not too tedious or anything like that. Roger McCreary had two. Ty J. Spears had two. You know, all a bunch of guys had two, um, but a lot. Of, but the good majority only had one, so that kind of sucks. Uh, any of the practice squad players I left unupgraded because if you know you know because if you get them up to like a 66 overall at a position of need for another team, somebody might come in and steal them. But if your guys you know saying a third on practice squad of uh, you know available practice squad players, you know they're less likely to be taken. Malik Willis had an upgrade. Jeffrey Simmons had an upgrade. A bunch of guys had upgrades. Uh, mainly the guys that went through the training camps uh, got upgrades. I am going to be using Chiggy, Ty, uh, Tajay Spears, and Traylon Burks most weeks to try to get them upgraded. Because uh, let's be honest, if I upgrade the quarterbacks, and if they don't have weapons to use, uh, there's no reason for those quarterbacks to be good because I'm going to struggle then if nobody can catch or run with the football. But just saying, you're going to see a lot of guys just being getting upgrades here. Hopefully some of these guys can be proven stars. Um... Like I've said before, I want to try to keep as many of the original pieces as possible. I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, hey, we're going to fucking tear down the whole team. Anybody that has value is getting shipped. We're going to draft a whole new team next year. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create storylines. I'm trying to create a unique experience for you guys. Um, I'm trying to create, you know, content. Nobody cares if you're just winning games and just being like, look at me. I'm a robot. Throw touchdowns. Cheese plays, you know. Or at least I don't. I, I've tried watching those type of YouTubers that do franchises where they're just like trying to win only. It's it's like, I'm going to do anything to win. I'm going to trade this guy. I'm going to trade that guy. I'm going to trade all the draft capital away. I'm going to sign guys to unrealistic contracts. I'm going to fucking, you know, do everything. Turn off injuries, all that weird shit. I don't personally enjoy that. Going into the last upgrade, Josh Thompson here. Like I said, preseason hero. This dude was making plays all over the field and his 92 speed definitely helped him stay on the team. So let's take a look at the scouts now. Um, so I'm going to be honest. I'm going completely after offensive line here. Uh, tackles for a good majority of the regions. I think it's central. Yeah, central, northeast, and southeast are all going tackle. Um, and then west and national are going either wide receiver or corner going into things. Uh, that's just what I'm going to do. It just makes the most sense for me. Uh Interior offensive line wasn't a very good uh, strength in this year's draft class so far. So if we have to, we can move somebody inside. You know, we can always move somebody to the to guard. It's easier to move a tackle to guard than a guard to tackle, in my opinion. The only player that I've really ever known to move from guard to tackle and show and show to be good or just as good as they were at guard was Kyle Long a couple years ago. But then again, he struggled with injuries on and off. Um, there is edge rusher positions, but with Harold Landry. Joseph Desai and Arden Key all being here with Arden Key potentially getting a contract going into next year as well. I don't see the need to go after edge rushers as much. I would still like to just for the simple fact of having edge rushers that can't that actually can rush the passer on an all man is always great to see. So let's get into the game. We're going to have the intros here. Derek Henry getting us hyped up. We're going to Caesars Superdome to take on the New Orleans Saints. Um, of course, this team looking to bounce back from last year. They have Derek car now leading the way let's get things underway the first play of the game we're going to drop back into shotgun Tajay Spears split to our right three wide receivers to our left we're going to audible out of this pass play and into an RPO so we're going to be reading the end the end does not come so we end up handing it off to Spears he picks up six Tajay Spears is going to be looking to create a little bit of a role in this shotgun back or third down back as Madden likes to call it Eric Henry now out onto the field, and we're going to run a stretch play to the outside, but we're going to bounce it back up the middle. This is something that we're going to have to do a lot, is read the holes of our offense line. Our offense line isn't good enough to be able to get the edge all the way, so we're going to have to remember to always bounce back if we have to, cut up the field, get yards. Remember, it's not about the big plays. It's about getting the small plays every single time. You know, you know, As long as you stay ahead of the chains, you will be perfectly fine, and I think that's something that we have to keep in mind. 
with this team. We don't have the big play threat ability. DeAndre Hopkins is nice. But if the defenses are smart, they're going to bracket him. They're going to put two guys out on there. And Andre Dillard is a dumbass. Uh, new run blocking my mechanics, my ass. <laughs> Jesus. Already off to not a great start. Third and five now behind the chains here. I'm going to go five wide here. I'm going to be looking. I make a bad read here, but man, fucking Taylor. Uh, what is it? I, I forget who that is. Uh, number one, Taylor for the Saints. I forget who that is. I have no honest idea of who that is. And again, we're going to hand the ball off to Derrick Henry, but the play will probably be coming back. A holding call on us. Seems like anytime there's a fourth down and one, you will always get called for like a holding or a full start or something. So we're going to end up having to bring out probably one of the better players on our team, Ryan Stonehouse, and punt this football away to the Saints and give them their first position of the game. Try to pin them deep. We're going to pin them at the 15. Derek Carr is going to get his first action of the 2023 NFL season and his first action as a New Orleans Saint. So things to expect from him are the deep shots. Derek Carr likes taking them deep shots, and he has plenty of weapons now, so I don't think there's really an excuse. But then again, he had weapons in Las Vegas. Like, yeah, I know he didn't have the greatest offensive line, but he had weapons in Las Vegas. He had a good running back. He had Devontae Adams. He had Hunter Renfro. I know Waller had been injured these last two years, basically. But I don't think there's really an excuse for him in Vegas. And, well, let's see what he can do here today. I mean, you arguably have a better O-line, but then you, ha and you have a better pass catching back, but you don't have a better pure runner, I don't, in my opinion, in Alvin Kamara than Josh Jacobs. I don't know. Maybe he can get some stuff done, but... I. It's going to be hard to see, you know, look and see. I would rather say that he won't succeed. I don't, know. I don't think very highly of the Saints. Michael Thomas there was 17 yards, so his first pass ends up being caught. So he's off to an okay start. The run game's going hard. Monty Rice will miss a tackle. Be later taken down by Josh Thompson, our preseason hero, uh, He's actually going to be seeing a lot of playtime when we drop down into, the, into these big nickel G formations. Uh, he'll be that safety that comes in and fills in on the backside for Amani Hooker. Um, I think I'd rather have Bayard come down and play into the slot if we're going to be running that big nickel G. Just for the simple fact that he's just better at in coverage in both man and zone than Amani. But then again... Our corners aren't very good anyway, so it doesn't matter too, too much. Here, he's going to hit the underneath route to Traquan Smith, Monty Rice, and Shair both come up for the tackle. Monty Rice has actually played very well so far in this game, already racking up, I think, two tackles. He does have a missed tackle, though. He kind of overran the play. This will be sending a cornerback blitz. They run a curl route, and Amani Hooker levels Kamara and forces the ball free. Now we're going to run a zone blitz here. I don't really like that the corner was so far out or Arden Key was on the other side of the formation. There's no reason for that. If you're going to be dropping into a zone on the other side of the field, there's no reason to line up over to, over somebody just to make them think they're, you're running man. Line up on the end of the line. Make them think that you're coming. And Adam... No, that's Foster Monroe. Uh, Troutman got traded to the Broncos. Duh! Marquez Stevenson back to return this kick. 3.51 remaining in the game. All fantastic get going. Marquez Stevenson finds a hole. Going! Going! Gone! Marquez Stevenson doing exactly what we brought him in for. Kick return and punt return duties. And he takes one to the house on only his second try of the day. If he can provide even that little bit of spark from kick returns, he's automatically a great addition to this team. He's already made up his worth for the, you know, the million dollars that we're paying him this year. He's actually the reason why Ray Smith Matthew and Mason Kisney did not end up making the team. Simmons and some of the other key veterans come over to congratulate him. And Derek Carr already back to work. Man, that must suck for him. You know, you go down, you score, your team kicks the ball off, and now you're back out onto the field having to go back down the field. And we just can't bring down Kamara. He keeps finding these running lanes. And that's something I've noticed in Madden. Is I know they said that the run blocking is supposed to be better in this year's game and stuff. And getting up to the second level is supposed to be better. But man, 
just blocking in general and the AI is supposed to be better at finding the holes, you can't rely on them like accidentally missing a hole and, you know, not getting up to the second level. These running backs are very good at finding the holes. At least a couple that I've went up against. Um, and I don't want to spoil any games, but I've went up against, but then again, most of the ones I've been up against have been high level running backs. They haven't been like bottom of the league running backs. So maybe that might change once you like play like a team like Chicago who doesn't have like a top end back. They just have running back by committee. Who knows? It, it, it could be very, very different depending on, you know, what team you're facing, who it is, what their play style is. I would love to see, you know, what it would be like playing against like Derrick Henry. Like, is he going to try to get just get through a hole and pick up yards? Or if he sees a defender coming, is he going to lower his shoulder and try to run his, you know, run them over? I think is the big thing. Screen pass. We read it well. But we get chipped by the off the lineman, uh, Cesar Ruiz, uh, out of Michigan. And so, but we still end up taking him down for a loss here. So we're going to come out in this dollar look. They're going to run a screen pass again. I cover it up so he throws it into the dirt as he's getting hit by what should be Jeffrey Simmons there. Uh, yeah, it should be Jeffrey Simmons. We are running a 3-4, but sometimes I know this playbook has a 4-3 option, which I went in and subbed out the edge rushers for my stand-up backers. Here Landry forces an early throw, and it doesn't go very far. So they end up punting it back to us, and we're going to start on our own 17-yard line. Hand off Derrick Henry left. I try to bounce it out. Can't get it outside. Try to bounce it back. I get swallowed by Demario Davis. And we're going to be facing second down and nine. Again, hand off Derrick Henry. And who is number 19? Is that Jalen Smith? That is Jalen Smith, isn't it? So at the end of the first quarter, we threw the ball once. We ran the ball five times. Not very many yards. 21 yards in total. They have more yards just on the ground than we do all together if you take away you know Ty J Spears' yards if you don't want to count those of course I'm gonna drop back to pass here looking for CO uh, I don't really know how to say his name and I don't want to pr- mispronounce it and uh, end up in a bad situation so I'm just gonna call him CO for now we're gonna have full back dive with Derrick Henry this is something that we're not gonna be afraid of is putting Derrick Henry in these different formations to get him yards to get him going I think that's something that we have to lean on, especially with Town and Hill just not having the pure arm strength and arm talent to make certain throws. I know you could say, well, then why don't you just start off using Will Levis? I want to go with the storyline. I want to keep things going. Uh, of course, Ryan Tannehill, play action fake, looking, trying to find DeAndre Hopkins and just out of his reach. Traylon Burks didn't realize that the ball was coming. He maybe would have stopped. Well, if he would have turned around and then stopped, he might have been able to make a decent play at the ball, too. I'm going to drop back to pass once again on third and eight and airmail it over DeAndre Hopkins on the sideline. We're going to have to punt, and they're going to start at their own 22-yard line. Once again, Derek Carr from the shotgun, trying to cover that middle of the field, and Nico Autry and Harold Landry both come up with sack. We're going to split that sack. Harold Landry already off to a very good day. So is... This, the rest of this defensive line. The rest of the defense just needs to step up and start making some plays. They throw it short. They only pick up a couple there. Third and eight now for the Saints. Arden Key, I'd love to see something from him today. I know he's going against Ryan Ramchek, one of my favorite offensive linemen. And uh, Derek Carr is going to air, airmail it. Just put it over the head of Chris Olave. He's just not going to be able to get it. This is some, something I like to do is take one of my extra down guys and bring him back because then it gives me an extra blocker instead. And this is what I'm talking about. Mark West Stevenson gets us to the midfield mark, basically, and give us excellent field position for this offense to come in, take over, and see what they can do. Something I found out after the game when I was looking at injuries for both my team and their team, uh, Cam Jordan, both their edge rushers are out. Uh, Cam Jordan and... uh, uh, Peyton Turner, yeah, is that who it is, the, for, the former first-round pick? They are both on injury, injury uh, report this week. They will not be playing, so that is why those edges feel a little bit weaker, is that they have their backups, and they have the rookie that they just drafted uh, this year. I forget his name. Sorry with an F. I, I can't remember. 
Derrick Henry, though, 10 for 30, not exactly what we need, especially when this, when this motherfucker falls forward. He gets two yards. Only getting three yards is pretty not great. Ryan Tannehill trying to scramble, and the ball will come out after he is sacked. Kalon Sanders recovers, and the Saints will have the ball in excellent field position at our own 47. We're going to bring McCreary, and we're going to bring Elijah Molden on the blitz, and Harold Landry, out of all people, gets there. I don't know how the edge rusher gets there when he's like one of the only people getting blocked on a screen pass, but he does. That's good for him. So there, so Harold Landry already up to one and a half sacks. Roger McCreary just didn't play that well enough. Try to bring him down, but at least another corner will step up and make a play. I didn't see who it was. It could have been Molden or it could have been Hooker. We're going to try to occupy Eric McCoy and Caleb Farley gets beat by Chris Olave and Andreas Pete goes down. Uh, so that guard spot should be a little bit weaker, but we're still going to shade away from it. We're going to bring Shair against him. He covers it up just enough. He has a quick hitter. And then James Hurst, their starting left tackle over the rookie, over the second year man, Trevor Pen Penning, goes down. So now that left side of the line is looking a little weaker. But Trevor Penning is still a fine tackle. I just don't know why the Saints wouldn't be starting him. I think in real life, Penning's going to be starting. I don't think they're going to be starting James Hurst. I think they know what they have in James Hurst. He's a little bit older. I think he's 30, 31, something like that. There would be no reason not to start Penning. Kamara down to the six, second and five now. We got to stop them from both getting a first and getting a touchdown. They're going to hand off Jamal Williams right side. Lee blocked from number 64, but it does not matter. Jamal Williams will go up and over his own teammate and the defender on the play to get into the end zone. That was a hell of a jump. Ryan Tannehill on a play action boot fake. He's just going to take off run. No, he throws it behind him. And luckily, Nick, Nicholas Petit Fierre is there to recover. And I think Nicholas Petit Fierre is actually supposed to be suspended in real life. I'll have to double check. Um, I've already recorded up to week four. So if he is suspended, he'll just serve a suspension in the midseason, I think, is what we're going to have to do. Because he's already played four games. Um, because I think he got suspended for something. It might have been PEDs. I think he got suspended for like six games. So if he did get suspended, we will end up uh, putting him on. We will end up, you know, pushing him off to the side, making sure, trying to ho hope he doesn't play unless absolutely necessary. Because um, it's going to be hard for me to run around with nine offensive linemen with the way this game works. Uh, well, eight offensive linemen. So, the Kyle. Phillips made a great play on that last play, and then we're going to motion Trevon Wesco on a little trap. I wish we had more trap plays in this playbook. I love trap plays. Trap plays are one of the easiest plays to get going in Madden, especially on run. They have been forever because it just opens up so many avenues. A good throw there by Tannehill, but Paul's, Paulson Adebo uh, makes a great play on that football. Second and 10 here. A minute 53 remaining in the half. We're going to try to dump it off to Spears. And it's just going to be put into the ground. He gets tangled up with Saunders and nowhere to really go there with the football. I thought he would be able to get off that a little bit easier. He just doesn't. Looking here, trying to find Derrick Henry over the middle. And he's going to run over two Saints. I don't know if Marcus May was even in on that play. But if he was, that's probably why he got injured. He probably fucking messed around and found out. Going to hit DeAndre Hopkins here. Hospital ball there from Ryan Tannehill. He gets leveled. By Demario Davis, but second and five, minute 24, clock ticking. Tannehill going to scramble, roll out, throw it up for CO, and he's going to come down with it in the end zone for a touchdown. Nobody was covering that side of the field. Busted play there, but overall, very good play from Ryan Tannehill. Good, well thrown ball, led him to the end zone. Kind of reminded me of the Mason Kisney play that we had from the preseason. He goes up and gets it. This is one of the weird player models, in my opinion, in Madden 24, is uh, CO. For some reason, his player model just looks odd to me. I don't know why. Titans fans, let me know. Does his player model look weird, or is it just me? Derek Carr hooking up with Traquan Smith over the middle. What a diving play from Traquan Smith. Dropping back to pass again. 54 seconds now on the clock. Jawan Johnson should have went out 
to the outside. Steny cuts back in, and clock will still continue to run. 30 seconds now, second and one. Going to occupy the guard. And Chris Olave just burns Kelvin Joseph. That's part of the reason why the Cowboys gave up on him. On first and 10, shot towards the end zone. Just underthrown. Elijah Molden comes up with a pick. Can he return it? No. Trevor Penning chases him down. Trevor Penning, I think, if I remember correctly, was a decent athlete. We ended up missing the field goal. It was about a 59-yarder. Uh, it was just short. It hit off the crossbar and immediately went down. So, at the half, going in 14-14. I'm happy with that. I wasn't expecting much from this offense anyway. And I wasn't expecting this much from the defense either. I think this Saints skills position group as a whole is very good. Roger McCreary getting in there, breaking up that pass to Traquan Smith. He's a young guy that we are counting on to develop correctly so we can have a good corner. Off his back foot throws to Kamara and I don't even know who the fuck that was that tackled him, but somebody tackled him. I would assume it was, it wouldn't have been Bayard because he wears red sleeves. Might have been McCreary there. Overthrows Kamara in the flat, and uh, on third and seven, they're going to have to punt now, going into fourth and seven, of course, after that missed throw. Ryan Tannehill, handoff, Derrick Henry. He's going to put his shoulder down and try to run through to Mario Davis, only three yards there. Still hasn't really gotten going. He's running for under four yards a clip right now. 13 rushes, 48 yards. Not a great outing so far for Derrick Henry. Hopefully we can get him going more and more into the game. Here on another run from second and seven now to third and five. Only two yards. Not great. We've got to get Derrick Henry going. He's the part of this offense that makes it run. And again, on a draw play on third and five, the edge comes free. Gets free, takes him down. Fourth and four, we're going to go for it around the midway mark. We're going to, well, on the middle part of the field. And we're going to end up hooking up with DeAndre Hopkins on a comeback route. Good catch by him. Sheds a block, well, sheds a uh, tackle and picks up a couple extra yards there. See the and Carter in motion, our fullback that we brought in. He's just going to chip just barely enough of Mario Davis, but then Jalen Smith chases us down. There we go. Derrick Henry finally getting going. 16 for 71. That is what I like to see. Remember, you don't always have to run to the strong side of the field. We're going to run to the short side, and it does not work out as well for us. Only picking up four there, but we do still stay ahead of the chains, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So on to the next play. We're going to call a play action bootleg out. Fake hand off to Henry. I don't see anything. Edge rusher coming. Just kind of throw it to Wesco. And uh, I was tapping triangle really hard there. And uh, he ended up trying to hurdle somebody. You're not that athletic, dude. I saw your speed and your agility. Not very good. You're basically a blocker. Um, but I didn't like him at fullback. So we brought in Seething Carter. Uh, well, Seething Carter. And Derrick Henry up the middle. Demario Davis, I guess, just didn't want to meet him in that gap. So... Derrick Henry's going to run over the defensive tackle and the safety and into the end zone for a touchdown, his first of the day. Right? Now, I have no fucking clue who scored another touchdown. I'm going to be honest. I completely forgot. And there is Monty Rice again making another tackle. Another quality tackle for Monty Rice. Uh, third of the day, I think it's said. For some reason, he's getting covered up onto Chris Olave here. I'm going to try my best to stick with him. But Shair just doesn't stick with Kamara. And Kamara's going to win that matchup, getting up to the 40. First and 10 for the Saints at the 40 now. Going to drop into this cover three here. And they're going to hand it off to Kamara again. I missed two hit sticks because this game is a dumbass and didn't dive the way I told it to. Kamara, 10 for 68. Really good day. 6.8 yards of carry. That's going to win you football games. Here they're going to... Fake the jet sweep and then give to Kamara. Nobody was there to block Monty Rice, though. Second and 12 now. 11 for 66. That's not as bad. Six yards of carry. It's still very good. You get a first down every two plays. So I would be running the ball so much. Caleb Farley just doesn't come up and try to lay the boom or try to jump that route. If he sits down like that, you've got to try to jump the route or at least knock it out. You cannot sit there and let him catch it. I just don't think that's a smart move to do. But... 
whatever. I'm not a corner for a reason, I guess. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't have a whole ton of, you know, criticism I can give him. Derek Carr ends up throwing the ball away, and they're going to kick the field goal, and they're going to kick it wide left. Will Lutz. Okay, missing his first field goal of the year. Not a good sign for him. Handoff to Eric Henry left side. Only two yards there. We just can't get him going. 19 rushes, 83 yards. It's still over a four-yard clip per, but it's still not great. You know, we're talking about a dude where if he falls forward, he gets two yards. CEO with another catch today. 9 of 14 for Ryan Tannehill. Looking pretty solid. Nothing spectacular. No stack. Spectacular uh, throws at the moment. Derrick Henry up the left side. Pete Warner is going to bring him down after an eight-yard gain. 20 for 91 and two touchdowns. What a good start to Derrick Henry. So second and two now here in the third quarter. A minute and 15 remaining. We call this another stretch play here. And hand off Derrick Henry. I didn't really think the outside was going to develop, so I tried to just get up and get the first down. It did not work out. I think that was Marcus May who met me in the hole. So he's still not afraid of Derrick Henry. Another play-action fake. This is something we're going to have to utilize. Granted, I wish the linebackers would bite a little bit more. Demario Davis gets back into coverage, prevents the catch from Traylon Burks, and we're going to be looking at a fourth and two now going into Saints territory at their 28. We're going to motion Josh Wiley over, hopefully help pick up a block, and that backside, our offensive line just kind of cleared out. A little hole on that backside, so you just got to cut, hit the hole, get up, get the first down. That's exactly what we're going to do here. And then motion CO now for some extra blocking on that left side. Go up the middle, and Derrick Henry is still going to get four. So 23 rushes for 99 yards. That is not terrible. We will take that. It's better than, you know, most running backs will get, but it's still not Derrick Henry levels. Throw up to DeAndre Hopkins. He's going to go up and get that. He is doing exactly what we need him to do. Go up, get balls when we need him to. Secure those catches when we absolutely have to throw the ball. He is playing well so far. I don't know if he's playing worth his money, but he is definitely playing well enough for now. Monty Rice filling that hole, going up, getting Kamara and bringing him down. Forcing a good stop. End of the third quarter here. Now going into the fourth, Derek Carr. What can he do? Down two scores now. He has to start looking to create some offense. That should be a pick for Monty Rice. But he does not come away with it. Jawan Johnson, I'm just going to pretend like on the play, knocked away the ball, or Monty Rice just simply knocked it away, figuring not getting a pick is better than, well, not allowing a catch is getting is better than getting a pick. Or I, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Michael Thomas down the sideline. Shakes off two defenders. We're lucky the out-of-bounds line was there, or he could have went for a touchdown. We're going to send a double linebacker blitz. And they just did not get blocked. Tier Tart and Monty Rice both get through, force Kamara to slow down, try to cut back, and there is nothing there for him. Going to drop back here. Pass to Kamara, and Kamara is just torching us out of that backfield on those catches. We got to slow him down if we're going to win this football game. 8.31 remaining clock is ticking. Derek Carr needs to come up with a score. They're going to motion Traquan Smith, but he goes nowhere. Monty Rice with the tackle. He might be the unsung, unsung hero of this defense so far. He's not a very big name, but he is proving his worth right now. Jawan Johnson in the flat, and he dives. And Thompson and McCreary try to hold him out of the end zone. But there's just too much weight for them to handle. Tannehill back out on the field, 751, looking to respond now. The handoff, Derrick Henry sees the cutback lane, missed tackle, and two of the corner slash safeties. Well, I could have just said defensive back there. I'm a dumbass. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, had to bring down uh, Derrick Henry there. And now on second and two, handoff again. See the end, Carter. Come on, bro. Hand off again, and he's going to get to the outside, and he's going to dribble Marcus May off the fucking turf. 26 of one for 128 now. Now, that's not bad. That is what we are looking for in Derrick Henry. We are going to run this motherfucker into the ground until the wheels fall off, or until I feel like trading him. Uh, he is coming off contract, so there is going to be some questions, definitely at the midseason mark of, do we continue to go with Henry, and, or do we trade him off and try to get some capital, because we don't think we'll bring him back. 
in the offseason. I have not decided yet. I have no clue what I'm going to do. I'm having fun running with him. But, you know, there is some downsides to Derrick Henry. He's not a very good receiving back, you know. But he is an X factor. He is a very good runner. We can lean on him. And especially with guys like Malik Willis and Will Levis, who's going to need something where if I can't get them going, you know, hand the ball off 30 times in a game and get positive yards play after play. Except for here on fourth and on third and two, we get stopped. Trey Wolf's going to come back out for another field goal. See if he can hit his first one of the day. No, this one's short as well. So then, that's the Saints are going to take over, and Monty Rice just botches that. He gets through the hole. He had him. He thought it was going to be play action. Must have read, you know, been watching film. Must have been sitting there going, oh, Derek, Henry, Derek Carr's going to keep this. Derek Carr's going to keep this, and then just doesn't. On second and inches, Aziz Al Shahir comes up big, stopping Alvin Kamara on that little inside run that bounced all the way to the outside. We brought some extra pressure there, and it did not help. We're going to bring a cornerback blitz here. We're going to drop back to pass and find Michael Thomas over the middle. Kelvin Joseph just cannot keep up with him. Kelvin Joseph is super fast. Michael Thomas not super fast, but Michael Thomas is a very good route runner. He's going to lose you if he feels like it. Outside run here for Alvin Kamara. And Kevin Meyer just misses the tackle. Not a very good play there. Here we go. On second and four. He's going to cut back again. I'm telling you, these running backs have much better sight this year. I, I'm honestly feeling it. When I over-pursue on a play, it feels like they can cut back. When I under-pursue on a play, it feels like they're going to stretch it. it. It actually feels like how running backs are supposed to run. And Michael Thomas with a weird drop right there on a curl route. What is going on? So on fourth and two, they have to go for it. I don't think there's any other choice. We're going to bring a blitz here. And they're going to run with Kamara. I know he's been successful today. But you have to throw the ball in that situation, I feel like. Or at least line up in like a single back set and just let him get downhill. Not an outside run out of shotgun. Tannehill throws out of a sack here. Saw the pressure coming. The left tackle, Andre Diller, just could not hold up. And we ended up having to throw it into the ground. At least we got it out and avoided the sack. Here on 2nd and 10, X-Factor is gone in De Derrick Henry. So he gets met up with DeMario Davis. And DeMario Davis wins that battle for now. Six guys in the box. I was going to run the draw, hoping that maybe we could kick a guy out. But we're going to go to this play action. Going to hit CO, but Pete Werner. Bad throw by me, bad read, but then poor throw by Ryan Tannehill. It's going to get picked off by Pete Werner, the linebacker. Going to bring a zone blitz here from Elijah Molden out of that slot corner roll. Derek Carr dropping back to pass, finding Kamara again. Man, we just cannot stop him. Kamara has a decent amount of touches. He probably has about the same amount as Derek Henry. Derek Henry's just are all, you know... Rushes. I think Derrick Henry has one catch. Tries to find the tight end in Foster Moreau, but I run the route better with Harold Landry. It's a pick. He gets held up, and Harold Landry comes away with a pick. So, one and a half sacks in the pick. That's incredible. Great start to his season for him. I know he's dealt with injuries in the past, so it's good seeing him back on the field. Derrick Henry's just going to run over a couple guys, and we were actually running... Uh, Pretty fast here, getting up to the line, getting the ball snapped, getting up the field. Derrick Henry picks up a first. Saints trying to call timeouts, but Derrick Henry is just too good. First and 10 here, going to run this smash play, and Derrick Henry at least still gets three. Andre Dillard goes out with an injury, though. That's going to be tough. Jalen Duncan has to come in on that left tackle spot. But hey, we're going to say, this is your test, Jalen Duncan. Go get a block. And he pushes him down inside. Derrick Henry gets all the way up to the 28-yard line. Third and inches here. This could virtually put the game away. Going to run CO out there. Kyle Phillips <laughs> tries to get in front of the defensive end. That looked like the weirdest block ever. Derrick Henry's going to put his shoulder down and get the first down. At this point in the game, I brought in Ty J. Spears myself. Said, hey, hey, young man, we're going to put you in. We're going to get you some rush attempts. Two for seven so far on the day. He actually got the first rush attempt of the whole game and then just hasn't seen the field all that much. 
going to motion some guys around, get them moving, see if we can fool this defense. Pete Warren going to come up and tackle him. Three rushes, eight yards. Not off to the start, start I was hoping for, but granted, we are running against a heavy box, and we are going to be running against a defense that knows we're going to run the football. Halfback stretch here. He's going to get to the outside, try to stiff arm Marcus May, but Demario Davis being there just overwhelms him just a little too much. And on the last play of the game, we're going to run this clock out here on this read option with Ryan Tannehill and Tajay Spears. If you guys enjoyed this content or any other content here today on my channel, stick around and subscribe. I have more content like this coming out soon. Uh, Titans franchise has been a little bit harder to record than I thought it was going to be. Um, just for some internal stuff with my PC and uh, my PS5. So give me some time. I'm going to get those episodes out later in the week probably. I'm going to be getting some other content out here as well. I want to be doing rebuilds as well. So it's not just going to be Titans franchise. It's not just going to be roster updates. Um, 2K24 is coming out soon. I don't think I'm going to do content for that. Uh, I want to focus on Madden currently at the moment. I enjoy playing Madden a lot more. I could be seeing myself playing Madden for the next two months and not even looking at 2K. I probably won't even be buying 2K right away. I'm going to be completely honest. But with that being said, guys, if you guys enjoy this content, please like, hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell so you guys can be notified anytime I post a video. With that being said, guys, I'm out. Peace.